Welcome to Passionate World Talk Radio. Educate, enlighten, entertain. Hello, everybody. This is Betsy Wurzel, host of Chatting with Betsy at Passionate World Talk Radio Network, where we educate, enlighten, and entertain. Folks, you really need to listen to this podcast because I have a very special guest on. You ever think about when you go to the doctor and you want an antibiotic? You ever think about what is in the food that you're eating? Have those animals been treated with antibiotics? Well, I want to tell you, I watched this documentary, Feeding Superbugs, Can We Win? Now, that's not the creepy crawly superbugs, okay? The, these are bacteria. And I really encourage everyone, when it is available on Amazon Prime, to watch this documentary, Beating Superbugs, Can We Win? And my guest today, who was the director and co-producer of Beating Superbugs, Can We Win? is Mr. Bill Mudge, who did several short films, and this is your first major one. Thank you, Mr. Bill, for coming on, chatting with Betsy, well, and for making this documentary. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about the film. Sure. Could you please give a little of your background? And then well, we're going I, to go into the film. I didn't start in the film industry. I used to do um, <laughs> software design and development for uh, big investment banks. And I was very happy doing that for a long time. But I had also had an interest in the visual arts since I was very young. But one had obvious career possibilities and the other didn't. But I, I still got to show off some of my visual design interests, even as a software and uh, user interface designer. But as I got a little older, I realized I really need to focus on that. And so 10 years ago, I decided I had had enough of the IT consulting world and went to film school in San Francisco and took a one-year certificate program at the San Francisco School of Filmmaking and ended up concentrating uh, on documentary films. And I did that because programs like PBS Nova and Nature and others were always among some of my favorites. But I also realized even then that it was so important to choose a worthwhile topic because every uh, documentary filmmaker you talk to will tell you that once they're done, uh, they couldn't have imagined how much time and energy it would take to cover a subject decently. And that is certainly true for us. So we also feel that our topic is as timely as ever. It's not a new one, but it is, uh, it's got new aspects that people really need to know about now. So that's, in a nutshell, how we got to where we are with beating superbugs, can we win? I think it's excellent. I do come from a nursing background, and... I remember back in the 80s, doctors not even wanting to give antibiotics all the time, and they talked about that bacteria is going to become resistant to the antibiotics that were on the market at the present time. And when I worked in the state institution for the severely disabled, when they got sent out to the hospital, they'd come back with MRSA. And that was just starting to hear about a MRSA and for me at that time. And, you know, to see these people get so sick and of, with your documentary, which mentions about a MRSA and it mentions about resistance with tuberculosis and gonorrhea, and the C. diff. I mean, people, you have to watch this. How did you, how long did it take you to make this documentary? 
it took us about five and a half years to do it from the time that we wow. had serious funding to the time that uh, we're now just going through the final stages of submitting to our digital distributor. So the, the film per se, in terms of creative content and messaging has been done for a while, but in order to manicure it so that it meets the, the technical standards of broadcasters, that took a little longer. So we're at the very tail end of that just now. And when will this be available for the public to watch? It'll be, uh, I wish I could give you a hard date. Uh, it has to go through one more round of quality checks, but definitely sometime this month. Oh, okay. Okay, and that's on Amazon Prime? Amazon, Amazon Prime Video, and uh, depending okay. on uh, how well our digital distributor uh, works for us, we may be on other um, streaming platforms, but nothing is guaranteed just yet. Oh, okay, because this will be in the blog uh, for people to, to know uh, that information. Bill, I was always fascinated, and I don't think a lot of people realize this, the food that we eat, the animals being treated with antibiotics, which then go into the environment, affecting humans. This was fascinating to me. Well, it came out of um, an irresistible set of economics. After World War II, when uh, antibiotics first came into wide use, saving um, troops from otherwise life-threatening infections, people discovered that livestock given antibiotics mixed in with their feed would grow larger faster. So the people, the bean counters in the industry recognized, wow, what an economic bonanza. And for a while, uh, that was just fine. And then they discovered that, oh, Mother Nature watches everything you do. And when you use antibiotics, it gives bacteria a chance to adapt. So that when you do this with millions of animals, Mother Nature starts to evolve uh, countermeasures to that. It's like having the best engineers in the world working 24-7 to defeat whatever it is you've got so that what gave us, and still to a great extent with beef, gives us relatively cheap meat. You find that uh, you have wasted an antibiotic that costs billions of dollars and, and years to develop and only to find that you don't have anything to replace that. So that's, that's the scary reality of some of our cheap food. Yes, that was quite an eye-opener for me. I heard of you know, tuberculosis getting resistant, and I heard of gonorrhea being uh, resistant. I was not familiar with C. diff, which when you know, we take antibiotics, our intestinal flora gets um, could get thrown out of whack. I personally take probiotics, probiotics when I am on an antibiotic, but I knew someone who had C. diff, and the only reason why he lived, his doctor told him, because he had a good heart. I never knew how serious C. diff was, and when they were talking about the um, capsules of human fecal material, you know, sanitized, but put in these capsules to help or through a colonoscopy to put it in the intestine. I was like uh, amazed. Could you go into that a little bit, please? That's an eye well, opener too. When you, in, in the case of our patient who was originally in the hospital for breast cancer, uh, she was treated with um, conventional <coughs> chemotherapy. And that knocks down your immune system so that you wouldn't think, oh, I've got cancer, I need antibiotics, really? And in fact, you do, because your immune system can't fight back the way it normally does. So 
if you're given what's called a broad spectrum antibiotic that wipes out all kinds of good bacteria, and good bacteria are essential just to live, just to digest your food, then uh, other bad bacteria like C. diff uh, sees the opportunity. That is, if you've got two companies competing and one fails, uh, the surviving one tends to monopolize, and C. diff is just like that and causes uh, you know, life-threatening situations where you can't digest your food, uh, you're just feeling seriously nauseous all the time, and uh, in order to get that balance of good bacteria in your gut back, you sometimes have to borrow it from somebody else. So that's where the, the fecal matter transplant can save your life. And the ancient Chinese even knew this just kind of um, by accident. They didn't really have the, the germ theory that we use now, but they were among the first to try this treatment. That was, I, I was like kind of in shock uh, with that, but also I found it very interesting. And, you know, I know I'm guilty of this myself, Bill, when I go to the doctor, if I have a fever, I want an antibiotic. Now I try to do without it, and I know sometimes I do need it. I know when I need it for a sinus infection or when I have laryngitis because that's the only thing that would help. But sometimes we get mad at the physician because they won't give us the antibiotic. And that's a very when people, serious problem. Yes. yes. Yeah. And in watching your film, you will learn why doctors don't want to just, you know, push the antibiotics anymore. Can you speak about that, Bill? Well, there's what several aspects learned? to that. That is, we, we often go to the doctor as well as other kinds of service providers with a sort of transactional expectation that there must be some uh, medicine in that big collective cabinet that will fix whatever ails us. And increasingly, that's not necessarily true, uh, especially if you have a viral infection to start with. So, um, in fact, you're wasting antibiotics. You're just contributing to the development of antibiotic resistance if you take antibiotics for a viral infection. Uh, the flip side of that is that uh, your doctor working for um, a for-profit hospital chain is working under a customer satisfaction model where patients who don't get the antibiotics that they demand in many cases will give that doctor a bad rating if they don't get what they feel they came for. Um, this is getting somewhat better. Uh, another aspect of um, what we cover in our film covers high-speed diagnostics because up until very recently, doctors were using just their practical experience looking at your symptoms and deciding is that bacterial or viral uh, or fungal or, or something else and really giving you effectively their best guess about what was, um, what was infecting you. But now with uh, increasingly affordable high-speed diagnostics, they can actually know exactly what that virus, bacteria, or other pathogen actually is. So they're in a much better position to prescribe something that's directly targeted at what you have. That's good to know. I remember the old days, because I'm 63, when the doctor would come to your house and you would get a shot of penicillin. But that was in the 60s, so things, try, uh, science, has changed uh, drastically. And I know when my son is 36, even when he was young, the doctors were not in such a rush to give an antibiotic as they were when I was a youngster. So you do see the change in that. What would you like people to take away from your documentary, Bill? Well, I want them to know that, one, Antibiotic resistance 
is a global problem. That is, we all collectively have to get our act together. And nobody is really exempt from that. And we can already see it in uh, the COVID world in several ways that even with drastically reduced international travel, different strains of COVID are uh, reaching us from South Africa and from the UK. And uh, there's no reason to think that world commerce is going to shut down and prevent that from happening. So that if there's a problem in India or China, it's only a matter of time before it gets here. Uh, and the other connection that people need to realize is that even a hundred years ago during the Spanish flu epidemic, uh, people often made the mistake of thinking that it was the virus that finished you off then. But in that age, when we didn't have antibiotics, it was very often the secondary bacterial infections that killed you. And the same thing is actually happening today, that uh, bacteria and especially resistant bacteria are contributing to the deaths of the people who originally got sick from um, COVID-19. So that kind of connection, which we weren't even thinking of when we st first started uh, writing the script to this movie is a huge factor now. So back to the individual side of things, uh, you can make a big difference in terms of how you um, work with your doctor in, in terms of uh, the kinds of medicines and treatments that are most appropriate. And you can vote with your wallet. You can buy um, foods that we're not processed with antibiotics, you know, especially beef. Um, I won't go into why that is so difficult, but uh, some of the fast food chains have had a lot of success getting antibiotics out of the, um, the poultry food chain. And also other products uh, like uh, toothpaste and detergent have tons of antibiotics in them. And if you read labels, you can avoid that. And uh, corporations around the world will listen if customers say they don't want that. So you as a private individual can do an astonishing amount to change the way the world works. The flip side of that is we still need collectively to keep developing new antibiotics and alternative treatments because evolution isn't going to stop to suit our convenience. In fact, we've already accelerated bacterial evolution. And the most we can do is slow it down. We can't stop it. And the cost of doing that, as you'll learn in our movie, is uh, billions of dollars. So you're not talking um, what's even, you know, personally within the scope of, of what the richest individuals on the planet can do. You're talking about what governments um, big corporations and universities can do together. So there needs to be enough coordination to keep new solutions coming down the pipeline. And some degree of subsidy will be necessary because, uh, and I'm shifting into another aspect of this, you can't make money uh, making antibiotics. It just doesn't compare to what you can make with uh, medicines for chronic conditions uh, like heart disease and cancer, those are wildly profitable. And uh, if you are a publicly held company, you're going to find that modern capitalism forces you to prioritize those kinds of solutions. So when I mentioned governments, big pharma, and uh, universities combined, uh, you need that kind of coordinated effort to work well enough, knowing that political processes are inherently flawed. But we've got to get what we can. That is, the, the governments have the kind of funding that make it possible. Big Pharma has the experience and expertise that no one else has because you've got to be very careful about what you ultimately distribute to the public, just like the vaccines that have uh, come on the market for COVID-19. That's a huge effort to do that right. It's not something that you can mix up in your kitchen. 
and then um, the universities and some of the um, the startups that have great ideas. So if you combine all of those things, you can have realistic countermeasures to continuing antibiotic resistance. So you'll see at the very end of the film, we talk about containing superbugs. You'll never beat them, not completely. I thought your documentary, I, I can't keep uh, saying it enough, was excellent. I was, wow, you just shocked me about, I'm now going to be looking at my detergents. I didn't realize that was in the detergent. Also, Bill, with the, you know, antibacterial soaps and then the antibacterial wipes, I've heard controversy with that that it doesn't really kill the bacteria and sometimes you need a certain amount of bacteria to build your immunity and just good old hand washing, um, soap and water, a bleach solution to kill bacteria. Very um, basic things like that make a huge difference. You know, it's, it's boring, but basic hygiene does make a difference. Um, but you also need to develop your own immune system when you're young so that if you keep your kid away from everything, um, that's actually not good. They, they need to have their immune systems challenged to, up to a certain point. Yes, and also when I worked as a nurse, doctors would not prescribe um, Tylenol until a patient's temperature was 101 or above because they want the body to fight whatever is going on. And if you keep giving Tylenol, they thought that you know, your body isn't fighting uh, the virus uh, that's happening or the bacteria. But sometimes you really do need to take it because when you have a fever, especially when you're older, you feel kind of crappy. But I, I enjoyed your documentary, Bill. I want to thank you for making it about well, five years. And I thought it was interesting, too, in your documentary that one of your speakers said it takes 15 years to get a antibiotic to market with the testing and the research, and that's a long time. To take. It is, and it just dramatizes how far behind the curve we can get. And that's, that's where really... we are right now. Mm -hmm. And I, I would like to think optimistically, when you look at the development of vaccines for COVID-19, that was done in record time with some groundbreaking genetically based techniques that are brand new. And the results have been <clears throat> astounding. And we hope that some of that can uh, filter into the development of new antibiotics. But my feeling is, you know, don't um, put your eggs in, in one basket expecting that to happen. A lot of um, developments take longer than you think they, they will. Yes, yes, that's true. We're still waiting on cures for many different types of diseases uh, for one such as Alzheimer's, which is uh, close to my heart. But I want to thank you, Mr. Bill Mudge, for coming on and doing your documentary. Folks, you know when I'm passionate about something, I can't shut up about it. You need to see this documentary. If you by any chance don't have Amazon Prime Network, See if it's on whatever you have, uh, whatever streaming service that you do have. Request it. And they request it, Bill, with the uh, service uh, provided, if enough people request it? Yes, they, they do. Um, well, they're in the business of responding to, to customer demand. So if enough people speak up, um, they might approach us or our, um, they'd approach our distributor. I would really like to see this on PBS, on your station like that. 
So would we. And we really would. Yes. Yes. Um, definitely. I would love to see that uh, documentary on there. But folks, if you don't have Amazon Prime, get it for that particular month. Um, I guess you could just cancel your subscription after you see it. Or if you have another streaming service, I'm not familiar, familiar with a lot of them. I know Netflix, but I don't have that service myself. Uh, demand it. Ask for it because this is so important for you to realize what's going on with food and what's going on in the medical world. So do, do not get mad at your physician if they do not give you antibiotics right away. They're actually helping you by not giving you an antibiotic right away. They want to know if it's bacteria or if it's a viral because if it's a viral, antibiotics will not uh, be good for that, and then you're just going to build the resistance to the antibiotics. I want to thank everyone for listening. If you missed any of this podcast, subscribe to Chatting with Betsy, which is for free on Apple, Amazon.com. It's just to name a couple, but where you hear your favorite podcast. I want to thank Jeannie White, station manager of Passport World Talk Radio Network for producing the show, running the blog. Folks, please read the blog. It's going to have a lot of information about Bill. Also, I want to thank Lillian Caldwell, CEO of Passionate World Talk Radio Network, for making this possible for people to come on and talk about what they're doing and giving people a voice. And I want to remind people that it is February and to take care of your heart And not just show love on Valentine's Day, but show love to people every day and to be kind. Thank you, Mr. Bill Mudge, for coming on again. Thank you for sharing about your documentary. Thank you for making it and educating people about the uh, superbugs. Appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Till we chat again, folks, this is Betsy Wurzel, host of Chatting with Betsy. Passionate World Talk Radio Network. Bye-bye, everybody, and be blessed. Thank you for listening to Passionate World Talk Radio. You can listen to this program all over again by going over to https colon forward slash forward slash Passionate World Talk Radio radio.com you can also hear it on Spotify Spreaker Amazon A-L-E-X-A AMFM 247.com every Tuesday evening between 8 and 9 p.m. YouTube Facebook Facebook Live LinkedIn and all the other podcast directories one can find on the internet.